Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to a very special edition of AWS This Week, coming to you live from reInvent 2018 in Las Vegas. So AWS have announced so many new and exciting products and services over the last couple of days that we've only got time to cover a few of our favorites, such as the announcement of AWS Ground Station, AWS RoboMaker, DeepRacer, as well as SageMaker Reinforcement Learning, transaction support for DynamoDB and a new on-demand billing model, AWS also expands its services into the blockchain with Amazon Quantum Ledger database and Amazon Managed Blockchain. It's now easier than ever to create, manage and monitor your AWS environment with AWS Control Tower. Fast track your way to data lakes with AWS Lake Formation. The announcement of AWS Outposts. Amazon Aurora goes global and also AWS lights the fuse on Firecracker. And heaps of new Lambda features, including Lambda layers, new and custom Lambda runtimes, and AWS toolkits for popular IDEs. You're watching AWS This Week, reInvent edition with me, Ryan Cronenberg. And me, Faye Ellis. So AWS Ground Station is one of reInvent's uh, more off-the-wall announcements this year. And Ground Station is AWS's satellite ground station as a service that enables you to communicate with and process your data from satellites without having to build expensive ground station infrastructure. Of course, you can already lease satellite communications equipment from third-party providers. However, these deals often involve costly long-term contracts. The beauty of Ground Station is that it's an AWS pay-as-you-go service like the rest of AWS's service offerings. So we imagine that this service will appeal to those businesses leveraging the slew of commercial space launch operators like SpaceX and Blue Origin to put their own satellites into orbit. AWS are promising up to 80% savings on your ground station costs and the service is currently available to preview. This reInvent, AWS has announced over 13 new machine learning services, and a lot of focus has been on reinforcement learning models, including RoboMaker, DeepRacer, and SageMaker RL. So let's begin with DeepRacer. Now, DeepRacer is AWS's new 118th scale robotic race car, which uses reinforcement learning models, which are loaded onto the car to compete in autonomous races. And once you've trained your Deep Racer, you can race against your friends, take part in the Deep Racer Global Racing League for prizes and glory. And Deep Racer is a great way to get hands on with machine learning and gain experience training and deploying your own machine learning models. They have also announced a brand new service called RoboMaker, which is a service for developing, managing and deploying robotic applications, including a simulation environment for testing use cases without physically building or deploying robots. Also included is a fleet management tool to help you manage your fleet of robots and deploy up updates over the air. And Deep Racer actually uses RoboMaker's simulation service for its racing simulator. Finally, we come to SageMaker Reinforcement Learning. And Reinforcement Learning allows machine learning model models to learn on a trial and error basis rather than using vast amounts of data to train from. And SageMaker RL is the same fully managed machine learning training infrastructure you've come to expect from the existing SageMaker service. It comes with a collection of Jupyter notebooks featuring simple and advanced examples for you to get your hands dirty with. And SageMaker RL also supports simulation environments for both RoboMaker and Amazon Sumerian, and it can also be used to train models for DeepRacer. So Amazon DynamoDB now supports transactions, and this provides developers with atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable rights to one or more DynamoDB tables. So why is this important? Well, it opens up DynamoDB to a lot more use cases where ACID transactions are important. For example, processing financial transactions. Each DynamoDB transaction can include up to 10 unique items and up to four megabytes of data. Transactions are already available globally, and there's no additional charge to use them you only build for the reads and writes to your tables as part of the transaction. AWS has finally dipped its toe into blockchain with the announcement of Amazon Managed Blockchain and Quantum Ledger Database. And Managed Blockchain is a fully managed blockchain network and it can be set up with just a few clicks in the console. It supports both the Hyperledger and Ethereum blockchain frameworks, and it aims to help developers leverage blockchain technology to create applications without the heavy lifting involved in managing a blockchain network. 
So also in DynamoDB news is the new on-demand pricing option. So this is the ability to spin up a new DynamoDB table without doing any capacity planning. The table automatically scales to meet your application's throughput needs. On-demand pricing sees you build in blocks of 1 million writes or 1 million read request units, plus the usual data storage costs. With a million write requests, it's gonna cost you about $1.25. So our calculations here at ACG uh, puts this at about two to two and a half times more more expensive than traditional DynamoDB provision throughput. But the bonus here is that you don't get billed for capacity that you don't use. This is going to be a really interesting prospect for applications with low throughput requirements or spiky traffic patterns. On-demand pricing in DynamoDB is available today. And we also have Amazon Quantum Ledger Database, also known as QLDB. And this is a fully managed ledger database, and it provides a transparent, immutable, and cryptographically verifiable transaction log. And you can use QLDB as either a standalone service or also part of your Amazon managed blockchain deployment. You get a SQL-like API, and it's completely serverless and scales automatically with your application. And in addition to blockchain applications, this is also going to be great for auditing and management of sensitive medical or financial records. So AWS Control Tower is a new service that automates the creation of landing zones according to AWS best practices. And a landing zone is a baseline AWS environment that is created for a company, typically as their first foray into AWS. It aims to set up the building blocks of a company's future migration efforts. Now, depending on the team composition, landing zones can be really complex multi-account affairs, uh, which is hard to manage, govern, and ensure compliance. So AWS Control Tower simplifies this uh, onboarding process by not only automating the creation of a landing zone, but by also providing the tools to centrally govern and manage AWS services used in the landing zone after its creation. A data lake is often a crucial part of an organization's data strategy, and AWS have had best-in-class tooling to help organizations realize their data lake needs for quite a while now. However, the hurdle has often been a question of how do all these services fit together cohesively, and how do I secure it? Well, AWS has now introduced lake formation to help answer these questions and to lower the bar to entry by simplifying the data lake setup process. Just point AWS lake formation at your data sources, define your security policies, and lake formation collects and catalogs your data, moves it to your new S3 data lake, and uses machine learning to classify it. So AWS Outpost offers AWS services and infrastructure in your own data center. And by ordering AWS hardware for your data center, you are able to have consistent functionality and access patterns in a hybrid cloud environment. And when your workflow does eventually move into the cloud, the APIs won't change. AWS Outpost is available in two flavors, a VMware control plane, as well as an AWS native variant. Outposts are available to order through the AWS console and comes in a range of storage and compute options. Just plug them into your power and network and away you go. Amazon Aurora Global Database is a new feature available for the Aurora RDS database service. It allows a single Aurora database to span multiple regions and it's great news for applications with global footprints and strict availability requirements. Replication times between the regions are typically below one second with an upper limit of five seconds. And this feature is only supported in the MySQL edition of Aurora, and it's currently available in US East, US West, and Ireland. So one of the themes this week from AWS has been a focus on serverless and not just adding new services, but improving the developer experience with existing services. And Lambda has definitely felt the love. With the announcements of Lambda API runtimes and Lambda layers, developers can now build their own custom runtimes and share code between functions. And this has enabled AWS to release runtimes for C++ and Rust, which are available today with more languages coming soon. In some very cool news this week saw Amazon release the underlying technology that powers Lambda and Fargate. It's called Firecracker and it's an open source virtual machine monitor using the Linux KVM and it allows you to create micro VMs. And because it's open source, 
that means you can run Firecracker on your own hardware and even contribute to Firecracker on GitHub. And Firecracker is written in the Rust programming language, which enables it to be secure whilst being incredibly lightweight. And they have demonstrated startup times of under 125 milliseconds. Now, currently Firecracker runs on Intel processors, but we expect them to add support for AMD and ARM processors in 2019. AWS has also introduced developer toolkits for popular IDEs like PyCharm, Visual Studio Code, and IntelliJ. These toolkits will help developers get started with serverless by leveraging built-in serverless application model templates and the integrated debugging of serverless application with the SAM CLI. Lastly, AWS added the ability to invoke Lambda functions from application load balancers. This should allow for some interesting applications that leverage ALB content based on routing to invoke different Lambda functions functions depending on the content requested. So on to Guru of the Week, and the correct answer this week was C. And lots of you got it right, but the person with the best answer is Jia Wei Li. And Jia Wei is a student at Nanyang Polytechnic in Singapore. So congratulations, mate. There's an A-Cloud Guru t-shirt, sticker, and a hand sign card on the way to you in the post. And you're also in the draw to win a free ticket to reInvent for 2019. So please see the link below for this week's question, which is now live on our Facebook page. And I just want to say on behalf of the whole team at A-Cloud Guru, we'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who stopped by our booth at reInvent to say hello and we hope you enjoyed reInvent as much as we did. And that's all from us. You've been watching the special reInvent 2018 edition of AWS This Week. Keep, Keep being, being awesome, awesome Cloud Gurus. And we'll see you next time.